Alrighty guys, uh, welcome back to Eat the Bennett's Garage. Today, we're still working on the blazer. Um, gonna be putting on these, uh, new set of brakes for the front end. And these are, uh, drilled and slotted rotors. I think they're from R1 Concepts or something. I don't know, I got them off Rock Auto. I, uh, it's gonna be kind of interesting because you gotta pull the hub off. But... I just came across a very interesting discovery. I popped the popped the caliper off, which it didn't really want to compress back, so we're gonna have to look at that a little bit closer. But if you look at this brake pad, there's something wrong with it. Um, there happens to be a very nice little groove, two grooves in this <laughs> rotor. So, um, yeah, it's a good thing I got those. I didn't even know they were like this. I just knew that they were a little thin. I didn't know that was had a big groove in there, but we'll fix it up and get her going again. So, uh, once you pull your caliper off and your pads, um, the next thing you got to do is we have, we have to, to change the rotor out. You got to pull the whole hub off. So to do that, you got to get to, uh, you got to take the hub off. So I'm taking these automatic. We got to take the, got to take the lockers off, which, uh, I'm going to be, I have a set of manual locking hubs that we're going to be putting on here. I don't really necessarily have a major issue with these automatic ones. But just the fact that uh, I have uh, manual ones means I want to go to those. Because they're supposed to be stronger than these automatics. Mia. Okay, so uh, hindsight 2020. Do not take the little ring off if you compress the spring. It gets you nowhere. There's a, a little flat spot right there. And you just pinch pinch these two wires together, those two tips together, and this whole thing slides out as a unit. And uh, this little piece just goes where that slot is. And now you have some, uh, there's some uh, little spanner nuts in there we have to take off. And then the whole hub's gonna come off. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, I'll get those. There's usually a locking ring in those. And you just gotta knock it out with the screwdriver and then spin it off. Uh, last 10 bolts I took apart, they weren't too difficult. But, uh, I don't know, each one's different. So, yeah. Okay, so this is taking far too, far too much time to get it to this far apart. So, once you take your hub off, I, you don't just have the spanner, you have this little wa this w snap ring, and then this washer. And you gotta take that off. And then you can take your spanner nut off, which is this. And yeah, and it goes, okay, we're gonna put this together backwards. And then inside of here, there's like another little locking collar, which I've always just done the old uh, cold chisel chick cold chisel chisel trick of you tap it like take your screwdriver and you beat it like this only issue is this spanner was on there so tight i went and bought a socket for it and i couldn't even break it loose with with this ratchet like i, I had to get an impact and so Somebody before me must have gotten it really tight. They must have been pretty mad at the world about something. So, I got that piece off. And then, this spanner, if you look at it, it has a little divot. It has a little divot there. And that is to, um, uh... So whenever you tighten it, you line that up with one of these. And then it will lock it and keep it from turning. And then you put the other spanner on there to like essentially double nut it so now because uh i don't feel like doing it by hand just spin this one out and then 
take your little magnet here, grab it with the magnet. See? And now it should, the hub should just pop out, which be careful that bearing will fall out. Which with my luck, that bearing is probably going to be shot and we have to go to town again. But, honestly, it doesn't look bad. So, probably going to repack these a little bit of grease. It might could benefit from some new bearings. We're going to look at those more in depthly here in a second. But, now, if uh, if one wanted to continue to like, because you have to do all that if you want to pull to do ball joints or to pull your axle out. To pull your axle out, you have to take off these couple nuts and then your backing plate and all that stuff's going to come off. And then your whole spindle will, will slide out. But I don't really intend to do any of that today. So uh, we're just going to tap those studs out put our new calip our new rotor on probably put a little bit of grease fresh grease in the burns just because we're here they didn't feel bad before and uh keep on sending it it will keep you updated so i guess the previous owner didn't want to go through the hassle of uh doing all this to change these rotors out and that's why he had a pad go bad the rivets ate into the rotor and then now it's a tracked brake pad and it has to come up a lot to uh get out of its groove uh, i just used a hammer to knock these studs out i bought new ones uh Probably going to go to the press and press the hub out of the rotor. Just because I'm sure it's like rust welded in there. But after looking at the bearing, I'm just going to clean it up. Wash in a little bit of diesel or gas. Get all the grease off. Pack it with fresh grease. She'll be fine. Going to keep working on this. So this, uh, I've got the uh, passenger side pulled apart and... Uh, this just really escalated a lot further than I was wanting to go with it. Because if you notice, when you wiggle this, that moves, but the tire the, the tie rod does not. So I have, I just went to the several auto parts stores to get new tie rod ends, new upper and lower ball joints. I have a new spindle seal. So we're gonna take all this apart and uh, fix it. And, oh, and I have a new drag link, too, for the uh, steering. But, yeah, that only took far too much time to do. But we'll get to uh, tearing this apart, and I'll let y'all know. Okay, so I did actually discover, whenever I was trying to take the spindle off, that uh, there is a lot of play in this ball joint. So it was a good call to do ball joints. But what I did, which not saying I recommend this, is... Uh, you gotta take out these six bolts, which are on that. And then, me personally, I took my trusty Harbor Freight dead blow and just wailed on the spindle till it got a crack. And then I tapped a screwdriver into it. And then I wailed on this side, put a screwdriver there, wailed on that side, and then all of a sudden the spindle came off. And then you can pull your axle out, which this is the long side. Because, you know, your pumpkin's on the other. This is a driver, so this is your long side sh axle shaft. Take your axle out. Hit your locker. Um, using that dead blow, it didn't hurt any threads or anything. So I think that's a fine method, I guess. I don't know. Um, now, we're going to have to uh, clean all the mud off and take... There's a nut there. A nut there. Figure out how to get the knuckle off. And, uh, could pull that off just because it all needs to come off anyways. Because I'm changing, we're changing this, 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 and then the two ball joints. And I do actually have a new steering stabilizer coming from Rock Auto. So, 
Uh, the blazer will be a lot better in the front end once I uh, get that taken care of. And then we're just going to have a leaking power steering box instead of a worn out front end. So, we're going to keep going at this and uh, I'll let y'all know once I figure out how to get all this stuff off. Okay, so, much time has elapsed. This is finally off. We can finally go press out this ball joint and that ball joint. Uh, that's like that. Um, moral of this story. So you need a spanner to take off these. Well, you don't, but it's better if you do. You need one for that. And then, unbeknownst to me until now, there is inside, this is a camber adjustment ring. You need another spanner for this. You can buy those. They have those in stock everywhere. These, I had to order this one. I had to order a socket for that. But, because I thought you had to take that out first. But, moral of the story is, a pickle fork on an air hammer is irreplaceable. I broke this one loose. Uh, I broke all, like, three or four ball joints. Well, one, two, three, four. I broke five ball joints loose. This one really fought me. So what I did is I jammed the pickle fork in there, took my little map torch, put some heat on her, and uh, gave it a little bit of heat, and then held heat on there and hit it with the air hammer and it fell off. So now we can press out those ball joints, probably clean this up, um, and we are ready for uh, a little bit of cleaning, and then we're ready for reassembly on this side. I haven't even tried to take the other side apart yet. Um, new steering stabilizer showed up today. So it is, uh, it's coming together. Well, it's coming apart, but it can finally come back together again. Um, so yeah, we'll keep y'all uh, updated. All right, so I, uh, I got all the old ball joints pressed out. And, uh... This is pressing the new ball joint in. So, I got it pressed in. I need to put the snap ring on the bottom of it. Um, these bushings I'm using, which is these three, is uh, just in this Harbor Freight ball joint press set. Like, I'm just doing that because it's uh, convenient because I already have them and uh, it's just different sizes. I would be using my ball joint press, but I since got a Harbor Freight press in it. It's just, just better. But now we need to press uh, these into there, which probably, yep, we're gonna use the same bushing, but we're gonna have to drop the press down a stage or two. So we're gonna keep working on that and uh, I'll show you when it's set up. Okay, so I also wanted to mention uh, this is just a three quarter inch or what is this? It's an 11 16 uh, socket and I just put those, you flip the knuckle over and you put your socket like that and push it out. But you do have to do these in like chronological order. So it's like you have to press the bottom one in before you can press the top one and you have to press the top one out before you can press the bottom one out. If you had a ball joint press, it would probably be slightly easier. Uh, I just have it lined up now. Uh, and it is, you can see it's going in there, which probably isn't the safest setup right now, but it's what we got. So it's what we're using. All right. So I ended up actually not messing with the, uh, camber bushing thing in there. Uh, I talked to my friend that he's dealt with these before and he's like, there's really not any reason why to change them that he knows of. And I really don't see anything either, like what's wrong with it. It's not worn out. It was driving just fine before. I'm doing this as a formality. Uh, I bought new seals for these spindles. A the little rubber piece right there. Uh, you just put it in there. It's for to, to seal the stub shaft to there. And then you can put your hub on there. That way everything's all nice and sealed up. This goes to the other side. Um, pretty simple. I mean, so right now, this is just loosely assembled. Like you can take your spin, take the spindle off, and uh, 
you have your axle. And those U-joints feel fine. Uh, I tightened. You just spin it, put it in there. And then stab this. And then you're going to put your backing plate on. Which that does need to be clocked. Put that on, tighten all those down. And then you can put the hub on with the brakes. You need to put the steering arm back on. Which uh, the interesting thing about that is whenever I took it off. There's little... Uh, cone shaped bushings so whenever you put your arm on there you put these bushings on it tighten it down it centers it so this cannot walk any which is i think it's a really cool design so i'm gonna go put the other side together uh yeah we'll let y'all know when we're over there all right so a little bit of time's elapsed we have our tie rod on so that's nice and tight now i just stuck the axle in we have this tight, we have the lower one tight. They're gre well, the top one's greased because you have to grease it and then put a little plug in there because otherwise they say that the drive shaft will not clear. The bottom one I can grease, all these uh, end links are greasable. I put a little bit of grease on the inside for that little roller bearing that rides right here, rides right there. Um, and then I have our new new seal in there. And you just gently slide her on like so. Wait, that's seal. Yeah. I think I actually put the seal in backwards. Because I know it goes on. I want to put it that way, but it needs to be. That's the way it was on. Be sure you put it so that the uh, where it splits is on the axle side. Okay, or at least that was the way this one was when I took it apart, which I kind of think is wrong, but that's the way it was taken apart. So that's what we're going to do. And then you stick your spindle on there. And now you got to grab your back plate with your caliper mount. Be sure you stick that on right. Where... Yeah, it definitely goes not like that. Huh. Yep, goes like that. And then you have your six little 9 16th bolts, which there's four there, but five. Okay, there's six. Put, uh, put those on. And I usually do a star pattern with the impact. I'm sure there's torque specs for all this stuff, but... All right, so I got the rotors put on. Bearings are packed with grease. I need to tap the seals in. The front bearings are packed. Uh, yeah, I know I need to clean the... I'll clean the rotors. Don't worry about that. Um, interesting thing to note here, as I try to knock almost everything over, is that uh, Harbor Freight sells this seal or this bearing installer tool. I have never had races be installed as easy as they are. Like it just, I flipped it around the other way for the races, but I flipped it that way for the seals. Um, it was like way easier than I've ever experienced. Normally I use a, uh, a brass punch and you go around the outside and it takes a while. This one, you just, um, uh, just hit it with a hammer and it'll it'll go on so yeah we're gonna tap these seals on clean those rotors off and then we'll be ready to put them on but it's coming together i need to go get the locking hubs off my spare axle i got and we'll be ready to go for a rip once i put the fuel tank back put the new fuel tank in it that's a that's a whole nother video in and of itself. But cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so I got this uh this hub on there pretty much. It's a little probably this one's in a weird spot because like it was either too stiff or not stiff enough for my likings. I probably lean a little bit more to the stiff side. This is more where I like it. Um Thing is also is I did tighten this on really good 
and you could feel it shifting it in more. So that was just, you want to get it, I got it pretty tight and then I backed off. So that way, um, uh, everything was seated and then you back it off to your desired setting. The next thing is, is for putting your thing in there. So I apologize again for the flashing. I really should get a different light. Um, so as, um, there's a little stud. You can see it right there. You have to line the stud up with one of these holes and this has to line up with a key on the shaft which is right there so easiest way i've found is i have a magnet and uh, uh i have a little magnet which is right here and um uh i just stick it to stick it to this uh, piece and then you can walk your magnet off and slowly uh, walk it on which I have this one in a bad spot but you get the idea you walk it on there see if it's lined up or not clean the hole it make sure it gets in the hole once you do that put your jam nut on there get it pretty tight so now once we do this we can put rotors or ca uh, pads calipers and lock her in. So, let me get this done and we'll catch up with y'all. All right, we got this bad unit assembled here. Uh, probably it's time for a new set of calipers, but they'll do for a little bit. Uh, I have all the front end tightened. I have all of my adjustments tightened. It's like ballparked right now. I'm gonna get an alignment tomorrow. Uh, now I need to put the wheels on it. Well, I need to get some hubs, but I can put hubs on once... Well, I need to get my hubs off, but... I can put those on with the wheels on it. And I just want to see it sitting back on the wheels. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, I am probably gonna... But I guess after this is I gotta put fuel tank in it and then I can drive it. But, for right now... This is what I got. Uh, new steering stabilizer... New tie rod ends, new drag link ends, new ball joints, new wheel bearings, new rotors, new discs, I mean new pads. Probably going to put new calipers and new hoses on it at some point, but those are simple. You just have an Allen there and an Allen there and it pops off. Uh, I guess with a full thickness pad and a full thickness rotor, they really didn't want to go on very well. And they are kind of kind of stiff, but I'm sure that'll smooth out with time but uh i guess that's gonna about wrap it up i mean it's those are about self-exclamatory to put on you flip it in and put the cover on it but uh i guess we'll catch y'all next time you don't have too much fun stay tuned for uh fuel tank stuff Alrighty, catch y'all later